Thanks for listening to CarCast on Podcast One. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night. And welcome to T-Pain's Nappy Boy Radio Podcast. The most fun you'll ever listen to while you're folding your clothes. Now let's get this straight. This is not your average podcast. T-Pain's Nappy Boy Radio is super fun, super crazy. It's pretty much an in-your-face conversation. That's the good thing about us. We don't do interviews. We do conversations. All of my guests, all of my co-hosts, we chill. We drink, we play games, we have the song of the week, we have the creative curse word of the week. As long as you're having fun as our guest. Speaking of guests, each week I'm going to go through my whole contact list and dive head first into the world of music, gaming, exotic cars, tech, strippers probably, doctors probably, probably strippers that are only stripping so they can pay for tuition to become a doctor. You never know. My wife is a certified bartender. She'll make you a drink while you're here. We'll get you drunk and make you play VR after. It's a lot going on, but that's what it's all about over here at T-Pain's Nappy Boy Radio Podcast. See you soon, baby! Well, what do we talk about in this episode, Matt? Well, we're going to keep an eye on an Icon Bronco and bring a trailer. And we're going to get into uh, Genesis, a GV60 EV vehicle. And uh, the uh, the result of the Formula Atlantic versus Indy debate we had uh, last week. Very satisfying. <laughs> first, there's Trico. Over a century ago, Trico was the first to make wiper blades. That's right. Innovation, man. And they've been a step ahead of Mother Nature ever since. Trico engineers, they study specific driving conditions, so uh, you're ready for anything. I don't care if it's raining actual cats and dogs, Trico is ready for you. Whatever the weather, Trico wipers maintain maximum windshield contact, no matter what your driving habits. You'll always find the right wiper blade for your vehicle, and that is why everyone here uses Trico. And the people who know their way around cars, and that's us, swear by Trico. Trico, the future of wipers, since 1917. That's right, going back over 100 years. To find a store near you and see the latest offers, visit TricoCatsAndDogs.com. That is TricoCatsAndDogs.com. Yeah, get it on. Got to get on the church. But again, I'm going to get it on. And welcome to CarCast. I'm Adam Carolla. That's Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, over there. Hello. How you doing? I'm busy, but good. good. Yeah. How's about you? Good. Busy as well. As you, I just got back from a... A little business trip to Vegas last night, and uh, yeah, came uh, back in here ready to do it. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> I, yeah, it's I, quick I, little quick trip. I, I grew up, you know, I didn't have a lot of hard work and entrepreneurial types in my family. It's like I grew up. My grandmother had one job. She worked yeah. at the VA. It started at nine in the morning. It ended at five thirty, and that was it. There was no yeah. weekends. Yeah, there was okay. no travel. There's no, there's no anything. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe it's better because the new world order is kind of interesting because you don't have to work evenings or weekends or travel, but it's always on the table. Mm-hmm. And for my grandmother, it was never on the table. Yeah, there was never anything to do on a Saturday. The VA's closed. Yeah, She's right. Not right. going there. You I, know what I mean? I, and. It's just different for for other people, for everybody. I like Call the them hustle. Losers. Go ahead. I like the hustle. I liked going out there. You know, I went out for a trade show I've never been to before mm-hmm. uh, for Bravago, our drink, and work the booth and see if we can sign some distributors, get it out there. It was good. It was a good event. Um, all right. Well, we got a lot of car news stuff breaking. We'll get to that first. Yeah. And hot uh, f- Formula Atlantic follow-up <laughs> talk too let but, me uh, uh let me hit geico first uh, whether you own, own your home or rent your home we know it can be a lot of hard work but you know it's easy it's bundling your policies with geico geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy and we know that's a good thing too because you already have so much to do around your home already so just go to geico.com get a quote and see how much you could save it's geico easy visit geico.com today all right now, um, so we got 
Some of the stuff we're looking at is uh, Genesis is announcing uh, some SUVs and all electric SUV and stuff like that. I got to tell Everything's you, electric. Everything's going electric. I got to tell you, I, I, I've, I pass by Genesis on the highway, the big truck we talked about, the yeah. one you took to Vegas. Sort of looks like a Range Rover. I was just driving down the freeway. It just caught my eye. It's like, that's a good-looking vehicle. Yeah. And everybody says Bentley. He goes, is that a Bentley? It's like, yeah. yeah. And it's not, but everybody, but Genesis sure loves that you think it's Genesis a Bentley. Genesis is doing a lot, of, a lot of nice stuff. And maybe, just maybe, here's, a, here's an analogy. Um, as, as, so let's talk about sort of SUVs versus uh, flat panel TVs. <laughs> um, flat panel TV would be like, you know, well, you got to go with the Sony if you want the good one. And, and there was a lot of that. Now it's pretty much based on size. It's not really, I don't yeah. really care who's manufacturing it. It's just, what can I, you're right. There's how, a few specs that you'd look for, but everything's pretty I good. I want to get now. the best price I can get on an 85 inch. Yeah. You know, and that, that's where most people are. And, it's because everything's digital now. There's just no moving parts, you know, mm-hmm. and, and they can be kind of competitive. And I feel like with these cars, especially the interior, and I, I know it's made of metal and leather and everything else, but I, I don't know if it's the computer. It is just back in the day, and I'll say this about the the Ford Explorer. I saw a new one, like a sport one. You know, it's like, the gap between a Range Rover and a Ford Explorer or a Jeep Cherokee was a wide gap. It was yeah. like, well, you can get the Explorer. You know, we're talking about mid-90s or, or 2002 or something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. You could go with the Jeep or the Ford Explorer, and you could save yourself thirty-one grand. But when you get inside, it's going to be a lot of plastic and a lot of shit. It's going to be kind of like you're inside a truck. You know, yeah. it's not going to feel like like the Range Rover feels and that that chasm has been narrowed a lot yeah from the inside and the outside yeah like it has you look at a one of those ford explorer you know plus or sport or whatever like you just catch it out of the corner of your eye it looks pretty damn good and then you poke your head in the window and it's like it looks pretty good too <laughs> yeah. and the genesis and everything whatever you know whoever the marquee you know mercedes or you know a bmw whoever's making a, a range rover whoever's making the high end stuff i don't know they've shrunk that chasm a lot. And, it, and like I said, and, you could drive an old Explorer, but that was a choice yeah. you would have to make, and you were going to rough it a little bit. And there's there's not a lot of talk about, like, you don't hear in the conversations of people going, oh, this is a, a Kia or a Genesis EV, and here's a Porsche EV. You don't hear a lot of, all, well, who's making the batteries for that guy? Who's making batteries for that guy? You know, or like, who's making the electric motor, or where are they sourcing the parts from? Like, that never really comes up. It's just kind of like, it's an EV, like and it kind of works. Like you're looking at the quality of the vehicle, and you're looking at the brand name, the quality of the brand, and the warranty, and you're a little less like, where are the batteries coming from, right? right. Like before, we'd be like, you know, is uh, what what guts were in it, you know? But now you don't. And yeah. Things like interiors and stuff, it was always about like what's the best premium leather. But so many car companies are going toward. Like leather alternatives are going for the green factor or sustainability. And so now there's all sorts of different materials and patterns and feels. And I want to say Polestar, right? The Volvo like spinoff brand that's uh, going Seen public. a couple on the road. They don't use, I believe that's the brand that's like, we don't use leather. We're doing different stuff, but you're going to love the interior. And then you start to think, oh, I do like it. You know, and you're like, I don't know if it's cheaper than leather, more expensive than leather, but it's really nice. <laughs> well, the diamond stitching is free. <laughs> well, the diamond stitching is free, and it's interesting that you brought that up because Genesis has announced this small electric SUV. It's a crossover. It's the GV60. And you look at the photos. You're like, I get it. It's kind of small. It's got a good design to it. It's got that uh, the same kind of headlight, taillight on the, on the larger Genesis that you mentioned. Then they show the interior and they nail it with the diamond stitch interior and the really good uh, like knurled knobs and stuff everywhere that match the you know the uh, AC vents and 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 stuff and uh, 
it just looks good. Like, look at we're looking at a picture. Look at that interior, and you wouldn't think. I mean, Genesis is supposed to be the luxury brand for you know for Kia and. Uh, but it looks good. So this is going to have like a two motor or a two wheel, a rear wheel drive and an all wheel drive version. Uh, the max range, which will obviously be the slowest, lightest weight version, I think is about 286 miles. Nice. And the high performance version of this little thing will do zero to 60 in about four seconds, maybe, maybe a little less. <clears throat> well, the future is here. And uh... it's kind of cool looking. Yeah, you know, to me, it was always, I, I mean, that was always my beef. I was always getting into American cars going, what's up with the interior? Why don't you guys just, just copy it? And you know, you know what kind of taught me early on? Because everyone was always kind of like, price point, price point, price point. It's like, yeah, the, the front seats are 14 inches thick. <laughs> Why is that cheaper than making it six inches thick or right. more streamlined, you know? One of the cars or one of the companies that kind of got me to think that way was Volkswagen. Volkswagen in the 80s, in the mid 80s, even their lower level, you know, everything was lower level, you know, Jettas and Rabbits and stuff like that. The interior wasn't insulting. Like the just the button for the hazard. Mm-hmm. was nice. You know, yeah, you know okay. the seats were a little more streamlined and had a little bigger bolsters on on the side. It, it looked a little sportier. It just didn't look that tinny and hollow and shit. And then you'd see like an 80s Camaro and you'd go, what the fuck? You know? <laughs> yeah. And then my whole thing was, don't give me the price point thing because the Jetta is cheaper than the Camaro. So why can't you guys just do something that's closer right. to that? I'm not saying... I've seen what a Bentley looks like, and I've seen what a Mercedes looks like. I'm not saying do that. I'm saying do whatever Volkswagen is doing with their cheap cars. Make it – it's design yeah. more than it is the actual expense, you know. Yeah, and that's where it's really – where the car companies feel like they stepped up their game. First, it, it did start with design. Companies were hiring – good designers and putting more effort into the design and little less just like, hey, it's a pedestrian car. It's cookie cutter. Like, let's just do it. You know, it's just volumes. Like, it's for people who don't care about driving, <laughs> you know, and they just have to do it. And now it's a little bit like, eh, you know, why not get something that, that looks good? It makes you feel good about driving it. But <laughs> All right. Anyway, so I like some... that. I like that, uh, the Genesis. I do, too. I think their whole brand is good. Their whole line is good. All right. So uh, hot. Hot news about Formula Atlantic versus uh, Indy at um, Long Beach, right? Yeah. And now this is the obviously the vintage Formula Atlantic cars, but Atlantic because they don't have new Formula Atlantic cars. I don't. I don't think that's don't a serious. <laughs> it would have to be from the probably from the eighties. Um. So here is the question: Who's doing a faster lap time? Right. Yeah, who was doing the fast lap time? And, you know, the Formula Atlantic probably had, like, a straight Cosworth, you know, two-liter something with side-draft Webers or something and a header. Like, I don't I don't think they're putting down a lot of horsepower. I don't think Formula Atlantic had turbos or V8s or anything. I think Formula Atlantic was, like, a straight Cosworth. I don't know. Now Chris can look and see Formula Atlantic what the what the power plant was. So they were definitely down on horsepower, but they had big tires. Yeah, and they were light. Yeah, and it's a tight track. So what's your prediction? I that's a tough one because the the Indy cars now are just so advanced and they're so quick on the straights that I I think it's close, but I think the the Indy cars are quicker. I'm going to go Formula Atlantic. Not okay. because I think so, just because <laughs> just, I'll pick. Otherwise, this would be, be a lame a, argument. I'll, I'll be a contrarian. <laughs> All right, so what's our da- where's our data from, Ryan? All right, so the data for the Formula Atlantic, that was a tough one to find, but I found it. Um, we got a website called racemonitor.com, mm-hmm. um, yeah. and it says that the fastest lap time was performed by Todd Willing in a 1974 Chevron B27. 74. And the best time was 1 minute 26 seconds, 
point nine five eight. Okay. So there's actually a seventeen second difference. The F one that had the fastest time uh, was pa- Patricio Aware for Team Aero McLaren SP. Best time was a minute and nine seconds. Point one. Okay, but, but you got an F one <laughs> number. <laughs> or sorry, sorry, I didn't mean F one. I meant Indy. I meant you Indy. meant Indy. My bad. Yeah, I right. meant Indy. All right. When was the uh, Indy number laid down? The, uh, the guy laid down. That guy was driving a seventy-four. Yeah, that's a that's fifty years old, man. Yeah, I, yeah I'm curious what the what the I'm here's what I'm curious. Well, here's how this started. They had the Formula Atlantic race before they had the Indy race. Indy just recently at the Grand Prix. Right. Of Long so Beach, right? I that wanted to the, find out what the fastest Indy lap was from two weeks ago. Not not necessarily fastest ever, yeah. but the fastest yeah. from two weeks ago. Because they shift tire sizes and, and intakes and horsepower and stuff. stuff right, moves and we need to know bit. what year that Formula Atlantic car laid down that lap time. Now, because Ryan, it could get, be, do they have to run on vintage tires or they can run modern oh, tires? Interesting. Right. So Different what was compound. the Indy time from two weeks ago? That's, do we know that's that? the question. The Indy time from that that, that, that is the Indy is time it. from two weeks ago. Oh, it yeah. is. All right. So he did a what do you say one seven one minute nine seconds point wow. one. Wow. And it looks like he didn't finish the race. Also, just for reference, the fastest time ever was in 2018, and that was a minute seven seconds point five five. Wow, that's cooking. Who did that? You know. Yeah, that was Joseph Newgarden. Yeah. Wow. Well, he's fast. <laughs> we know he's. I think he came in second at the race and the points <clears throat> this season. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well. The Indy, uh, the Indy whooped up on the Formula Atlantic. I stand corrected, but 1974, man. Ah, uh, well, that's the thing. It's like what, what would have, what would Indy car or Indy equivalent would would have run years ago, you know, versus now? Because we don't know. Oh, uh, what would a 1974 Indy car do? Yeah, 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 yeah. probably be quite a bit slower. <laughs> you know, yeah. Uh, and now it starts to think about what do the sports cars do? Like, what did. What did Newman do back in the day? At, he crashed. <laughs> yeah, he crashed. And Fitzy, he, I think Fitzy crashed too. He dive bombed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He just he did this stupid thing where they're just going down that back straight, and he just dive bombed everyone, and he was never making it out of that turn. Yeah, took Irv Hare, I think, out. So, so around that track, the Indy cars are the fastest things out there. I don't think there's anything else that they put on that track. That is faster. But I, to your point, it's not a huge difference between vintage Formula cars and modern day best of the best technology Indy cars. Yeah, no, you're, <laughs> you're right in that uh, a Formula Atlantic, the car was a 74, but we don't know what year they, they laid it down. But 74? Oh, you do this year? Yeah, that was, oh, was, that was this year. year. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that was this year. Also, yeah. just for reference, again, all the cars were from the seventies. Nothing. Oh, nothing made it in the eighties. Yeah, seventies yeah. cars. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. The real question is, what would an Indy car have done in in seventy uh, four? And then, of course, you wouldn't know to, to look this up. But what is the tire that they're running now? Right? Do they call Roger Kraus and be like, "I need to run something vintage spec," or is he like, "No, no, this is what we're all running now." There's just everybody well, runs the from, same thing. Well, from what I know, from whatever experience I have, somebody said, "Here's the tire you got to run." Yeah. Or, or sometimes they'll go, "You can run this tire, you can run that tire, but you can't run the other." Tire. Yeah. Well, whatever. This guy was the fastest time of the weekend, so he's probably running the best of the tire options, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, but you know, I, I wish we, you know, were in the vaccination line so we can go in and see those damn things. All we can do is hear them from the from, from uh, uh from the road out front. But anyway, it's kind of interesting to. Did they to run a Cosworth in those Maxipana? Yes, they did. Yeah. Wow. Good call. Also, w- Wikipedia yeah. says. Uh, that they run Cooper Atlantic Championship racing slicks and rain tires. That, that's mm-hmm. the, okay. the standard. Good okay. to know. Yeah, they, they either do the Cosworth BDD engine or the Toyota 4 AGE engine. Mm, yeah, either way, it's a straight four and it's naturally aspirated. And it just maybe two liter, two two, something like that, two four. They, they just can't be putting down. I mean, they probably get... 
three hundred and five horsepower out of a two 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 out of something that weighs nothing. You know, thirty yeah. percent of the weight of that thing is the driver. Right, <laughs> you know, like point. when you start getting into it, it'll be interesting to see when the race comes back around in April, right? Because it's going right. to be, you know, what's going to be the vintage race? Like, what's what's the marquee, or you know, what's the theme for the vintage race? It, it'd be a good thing to look into because we're local, and yeah. maybe there's a car to bring down there. Yeah, that is yeah, that's an interesting. Minimum that runs. <laughs> minimum weight is uh, yeah. Minimum weight is uh, twelve thirty. By the way, with the driver. Wow, that's the minimum uh, on a Formula Atlantic car. All right. Uh, what else we got? I just wanted to mention this. I think as we're sitting here, it might have gone off, but you know, we talk about Icon Broncos and Singer Porsches and kind of what how it's. How these modified vehicles have changed in value over the years, what they're worth with good quality stuff. Somebody yeah. bought an Icon Bronco. I think it was the 28th or 25th or 26th. Saw it on Bring maybe. a Trailer. On Bring a Trailer. Should be ending any minute now. Last time I looked, it was over $200,000. It, it was a client and uh, consigned it to a dealer in Utah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Chris, maybe you could find it on Bring a Trailer as an Icon Bronco just to check in to see. Uh, maybe you could kind of run it in the background while we're doing the show, see if it sells. But I think it was 201, uh, and it maybe had about 30 minutes, yeah, 30 minutes it, left. Yeah, it, it was in the... Uh... Yeah, so it's 210, it's got three minutes left. We'll see if the timer reboots. But, I mean, I don't know what the price range is on these things from 150 or 160 to about 200. If you bought one new and had it, you know, kind of spec'd out and made from, from Icon. So, I mean... What this guy puts five thousand miles on it, sells it, gets all his money back, maybe more. Yeah, I don't know uh, when Icon built this one. If it was number twenty eight, it's probably it, check the first paragraph. I think it was in the first, probably earlier. Of the uh, I gotta imagine be more than two hundred now. T- uh, twenty eight, right there, first sentence. This was the twenty eighth. Right, but I don't know if, what year is that. Two thousand fifteen. I I don't know what year. It yeah, I, that's a good question. I don't know when it, when he, it was built. But. Listen, you know, I don't like to talk about me being right all the time. But one of the cars we never talk about really on the air, or rarely, but we've talked about off the air, maybe a little on the air. But you've seen it. I've wa- I've looked at the Spikers, and yeah. I went, that's no, a, we, good, that's we, a good looking a couple car. Couple times now. That's a good looking car. Yeah. And it's nice. And they just never got any traction. They never went anywhere. Mm-hmm. And... Five years ago, you get one for buck thirty or something like yeah. that. Those things are three fifty to four now. Are they? I, I didn't know they were that the much. Spiker I, Galpin was a dealer for a while. We'd see them there. Spiker just, I think one sold maybe at auction, but I think Bring a Trailer sold one. They're four hundred grand. And I looked at those cars all the time. Diamond stitching. Yeah. A uh, lot of diamond stitching. And, and very, very nicely done. Yeah. And I just look at that car and go, why is this considered a stinker? Like and people are like, we don't like it, and we didn't, we didn't want it. Well, if you could have picked one of those things up, yeah, for a buck twenty five a few years they ago, were Audi powered, yes, Audi V eight mid engine. Oh. Um, those things are four hundred grand now, and yeah. I think they're going, they're on the move because they didn't make very many of them, yeah. and they're going to be one of those cars that people got sort of sucked in. Like I was just kind of looking at it, going. I think it's pretty nice. This is pretty nice. And everyone else like, yeah, that's fine. We're not interested, you know. Yeah. And they were selling for, I don't know, 200, 180, 225 or whatever. But they were down to like 130. They were kind of like Mangusta kind of Kind of a range. baby Pagani, right? Because like very sort of mechanical and exposed mechanics on the interior, the shifter linkage and stuff has a little bit of Pagani styling to it. Well, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But also, what it really looks like is that um, ATC, whatever, you know, three liter, whatever the car, I can never remember the name of that we, we love so the much. The ATS. The ATS. The ATS 2500 G. ATS 2500. It, if you look at the car, you look yeah. at the intake yeah, and does. stuff and the shape of it and the dimensions, proportions and stuff, yeah. it looks like the ATS, which is probably with the, which also has a, small displacement mid mounted V8 yeah. in it like the Audi I think the Audi may be a 4 liter V8 but you look at those cars and you go oh the Spiker and the ATS they kind of look like the same car and did one just go 
I can't see the price up there. Three hundred seventy thousand seven fifty at Audrain's. Three seventy. Yeah. Now picture the ATS with the right. intake on the side and stuff like that. And you go. It, it's oh, almost yeah. like if ATS did a modern car today, it would right. have a little. It would have quite a bit of that in it. It would have yeah. quite a bit. So those things are knocking on the door of four hundred. I think one sold at Bring a Trailer Max Zapata, but those things are getting up to four hundred grand now. And by the way, it, they have a modern Audi engine in them, like and probably drivetrain. Like that's a car yeah, you I, could drive. You could take that thing up the coast, right? I think you could. I I don't know what they're like to drive. I never really read much about them, about being just like a dynamo on the track. I'm sure it's fine, but it, like you never. It's a it's a it's a stylistic I, I, move. I think it, it's a naturally aspirated Audi V8. You know, uh, maybe four liter, four four, something like that. Um, I mean, you're talking about. 400 horsepower on a good day, maybe three, 345 yeah. or something. Like, it's not a fire breathing I engine. Say... I bet the car's heavy. Yeah. And it doesn't have a ton of horsepower. I don't think it was, it wasn't, you know, it's no turbo Porsche. It, it was more about the style and about pulling up to cars and coffee with a whole bunch of guys with, Lambos, and you pull that thing up, and like it, no a, one has it's one. It's an eye catcher. Spiker, for sure. by the way, in August, one sold on Bring a Trailer for four fifty. Do we know what model it was? Do we know if if it was that model or the the C eight or there was a newer model? I don't know. Was it Aileron? Lavalette. Maybe? Yeah. Yeah. I, was it Aileron? Maybe. Yeah. They. Which is yeah. I don't know if they even made the second version or whatever version. Well, and they were going to make an SUV that looked like it. The yeah, point is, like is a, everyone listen to me? All right. So actually, there's one of the things I wanted to bring up because uh, it, uh, somebody asked me. Uh, the Broncos at two thirty five. Two thirty five. Now it reset the clock. It's going to keep going. Somebody asked me what your top ten cars would be, mm-hmm. and I said, "Well, let me take a shot at guessing what the top ten was." I was kind of in a rush. I grabbed six. All right. But let's see if we can fill it out. So I, I six cars that I, off the top of my head, I actually said that ATS 2500 GT, because we just came back totally. from Monterey. Love I got a Datsun guy. 510. I got a Ferrari Lusso, a Lamborghini Miura, a Lamborghini 350 GT, and a Porsche 917. Mm, that's good. Always got to throw the uh, M1 Pro Car. M1 in there, Pro the, Car. The BMW. Right. I just, write that down. I just M1 Pro car. love that car. I just okay. love the look of that car. Um, so let's uh, let's break it down. Well, I guess you'd have to go with the 240Z okay. in there somewhere as well. Um, um, in a in a weird way, the 2000 Roadster. It's just a always love those cars. Uh, it's getting a little Datsun centric, I know, but uh, the two, not the sixteen hundred Roadster. That's a pushrod yeah. engine, but the two liters got a big head on it. It's not an L engine; it's a U yeah. designation, and it's got a big like racing ported head so on M1 it. M one Pro six, Car, six tall ass, two forty, and uh, the Roadster two thousand. Yeah, and then let's say we added one more to that list. Well, if we didn't change what I already, we used to gotta. Say. We gotta. There's a couple. We gotta. We gotta give a nod to the Ferrari 512 race car. Yeah, is that the 512 Max Zapata? Is that the? That's the big flat boxer engine in the back. The big flat. Uh, yeah, yeah, but I. But but that's not the. Ah, shit, that's not the BB. That's not the. Yeah, this is the 512. Yeah, go go uh, one. Go to the right. One more. There you go. That that could so be one of the baddest seventy. Yeah, that could be one of the baddest mobiles ever. Yeah, right. Yeah. So that was good. when people always ask that question, like, "What's the top ten favorite cars or whatever?" My first reaction is, "I don't want to answer this question." Then my second <laughs> reaction is, "In race trim or street car?" Yeah, because there's you, always a thing. You gotta right? go back and forth. I, you gotta you gotta believe the nine thirty five. K three, yeah, is is pretty. 
and, pretty and, and, pretty high up there. I know when people ask the question, they mean streetcar. So I always got to pick. You always got to think a few streetcars mixed with racing cars. Of course, mm-hmm. Mira is always going to do great, right? Right. And now that ATS, which is just a cool car, the ATS 2500. Well, they made cool seven of them, I guess, right? <laughs> yeah. And it's got a Ferrari-based, you know, I guess it's a four-cam V8. I mean, I, it just, I don't know what's cooler than that car. It's a, it's a, just a cool piece and a cool story. By the way, the Bronco, the Icon's up to 250000 the clock reset. Yeah, so it's just... But it was 210 30 minutes ago when the seller was like, oh, man, it's right on the bubble of what I probably wanted. Now it's it's probably doing better. Well, it's a, it's a new world order, and it's kind of interesting. And I don't know what you think of this, but, you know, we always had that, you know, Chip Foose or Cal Customs or whoever that could build this celebrity a car, but then they'd get divorced and wouldn't be worth anything right, and right. St- stuff like that. And, you know, then Spike, uh, sorry, then um, was a Porsche icon and uh, Singer. Singer. I was doing Spiker and Singer. Mm-hmm. Uh, then Singer came along and, and, and Icon came along and some other companies as well. And they started making cars and they were, they were hand built one off cars, but they still had a model. You, you know what I mean? It wasn't yeah. just Chip Foose. You know, you bring Chip Foose something, mm-hmm. and he just mm-hmm. does what he wants to do with it. You know, it was right. like, we're doing a 911. We're doing a Bronco. Right. You, you know what I mean? And I feel like that consistency added something to the value to it versus, yeah, okay. like, I got a, you know, a notchback Mustang 67. I'm going to bring it to Chip Foose, and I'm going to have him trick it all out. It's one of one, but it's... it. You 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 need some examples to trade, you know, set set a mark, yeah. set a price in the marketplace. And if Chip Foose is going to make twenty five different cars, we're never really going to get that, right? And with with Icon, I mean, obviously you have to do it right. Singer and Icon do it right. They go, okay, there's a market now. We yeah. know how much one costs new. We know how much one sold for, and bring a trailer. We're setting a market. Which which is nice because it's nice to have these boutique companies set sort of a a market. It, it does, but it also makes you feel like you're getting a really good quality five hundred thousand dollar custom build for two hundred thousand because that company plans to make 50 of them or something, right? right? So right. now you're like, oh, because they're doing the CAD work and the machine work and on you know, on a billet grill. Like, the Icon's got a, a full-on billet grill. But right. what does that cost to do one? What does it cost for him to make, you know, 35 of them, right? right. Like, there's that's where it starts to bring that price down. But you still feel like you get, hey, I got a custom... You know, five hundred thousand dollar build, basically. <laughs> it's uh, it's trick. It just trickles up. It's now uh, two hundred fifty-two thousand dollars. They reset the clock. Yeah, it's done that like three times now, which is always gets everybody fired up on bring a trailer. <laughs> All right, let me tell you about Mac Weldon. You're busy. Stop thinking about what to wear and embrace Mac Weldon's daily wear system. A selection of clothes with smart design, performance fabrics, built. To work together from breathable t shirts and polos to stylish button ups and shorts, underwear and beyond. I'm wearing one of their t shirts right now, by the way. Uh, the stuff is high end, the stuff is quality, and it's just everything they make. Well, it's kind of like the, you know, it's kind of like the icon. I, I just <laughs> it's picked making up. making good stuff now. I got the Mack Weldon sweatpants. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of like they're nice. It's like a really good quality, almost kind of dressy kind of sweatpants. And traveling like airport and like flying around, super comfortable, by the way. Yeah, they got the uh, they got their ace sweat shorts, and they uh, also have their uh, silver knit polo radius shorts. It's all Mack Weldon, right, Matt? Yeah, you know, buy some time this summer with the Mack Weldon Daily Wear System. For 20% off your first order, visit MacWeldon.com slash CarCast and enter code pro- enter promo code CarCast. That's MacWeldon.com slash CarCast, promo code CarCast for 20% off. It's Mack Weldon, radically efficient wardrobing. 
All right. Uh, now we're still at two. F- now we two hopped fi- up to two fifty-five. Two fifty-five. While we're watching that, I just want to do a. I just want to give Chris yeah. a little bit of homework, which is what year did this thing sell, or what year was it manufactured? That's the that's the question. Yeah, no, we know it's a 72 Bronco. But I'm, what? Not, I'm not sure. I'm highlighting it's like a copy and paste. Come on, no, man. Not, I know Leave you guys the man know. alone. It, it's got to be in the description. Like, what year yeah, did just, the seller acquire this vehicle, right? Like I, something, I or, feel like they, they're, they're pretty thorough when they tell you, you know, about the car's history. And the thing must have been purchased or manufactured in 2016 or some right. version at, of at, that. At the very least... We can do the math on it because Jonathan Ward brought like the first Icon Bronco here to mm-hmm. CarCast. We could figure out when that happened and then right. figure he's doing a few a year or something, right? Yeah, I don't know what number 28 means. <laughs> yeah, in, maybe, in I his mean, world. maybe it's year two or three of whatever he did, but we can kind of figure it out from there if it's not in the description. Uh, yeah, well, it is curious. I mean, number 28 is good, but it is curious that they don't say built in 2019. Yeah. I, I, it's interesting because I think I saw I think I think saw a few Singer cars that are popping up that do have that. They, they would say something like, this is a Singer from X year, and it may be like, had a singer refresh in a different year, like a you know if it's a it's a fifteen and it's got a singer refresh in nineteen. And- well, it, uh, for singer especially, it's it's valuable information. It's, yeah. it's critical because they switch to this engine, you know, or this manufacturer for right. the engine, or they upgraded so and so and whatever. All right, what what were you going to say? I was going to say just uh, kind of off topic would be uh, uh, Jeff Bezos. You know, shot himself into space and now he's doing it again uh, with. With other people he's got two paying clients and i don't know why he keeps doing this like invitation thing of like i'm gonna pick somebody to go he asked william shatner if he wants to go to space yeah. the rocket man yeah <laughs> shatner's 90 and i was just telling chris a while ago uh uh you know we ran into Shatner at, at dinner one night and then he invited us to his charity event we sat with him there and he's he's spry He's got a lot of energy, and I like him because he's a performer. Like he's done, he's not just like an actor. He's just a performer. Yeah, you know whether it's you know podcast or radio or film or TV or I assume some something on stage, Broadway. You know, just like he's just a performer. I think he's ninety. Uh, well, a couple things. My dad's ninety, and he ain't performing. <laughs> he's not. That's, he's not riding horseback he's down the street in a fucking chair somewhere right now. <laughs> <laughs> Number one. Number two, I went to some event. I can't even remember what the fuck it was. Some sort of thing when I was on Discovery Channel or something. I, I have. I can't even remember. It was 10 years ago. But, you know, Shatner was 79, 78 at the time, yeah. whatever he was. He was the orator. He was like the master of ceremony. He just got up there. He was funny. He was yeah. articulate. Like he was on his feet. Like he... He kind of missed his calling as like an actor. He should have been a comedian, like a, a stand up. Like he, he really was funny and engaging and telling stories and like hitting jokes and punchlines and all that. And, and yeah. And also, I, I think he sung the song Rocket Man. Uh, yeah. I well, think he had he, this album and he kind of, talked it through Rocket yeah man like I think he kind of covered rocket man yeah in 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 that in that album and but, I, but more as poetry right right yeah, right, right. <laughs> which he, is fantastic but like if you're, you know what's you know it's interesting here's interesting so shatner talked through it um <laughs> at some point leonard nimoy covered came out in the album too what what percentage of of the Star Trek cast dropped an album. Right. Because I'll bet you Hulu or who's the, la, 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 what was it? Hulu? Was it Hulu? <laughs> that, that's the Sulu. streaming Su- Sulu. Su- That's the streaming yeah, service. Sulu. <laughs> yeah. Sulu. Probably, I mean, they probably had uh, DeForest Kelly, the, the Irish guy. Like, I'll bet you everyone dropped an album. Don Johnson did. 
Oh, yeah. That Johnson did. did. Heartbeat. Heartbeat. <laughs> Uh, well, but so did uh, Eddie Murphy, though. But uh, sold, yep. He likes to party all the That's time, right. all the time, all the time. <laughs> two fifty six is what the uh, there you Bronco go. The, the Icon Bronco two fifty six. I think that's good money. I think that's really good money for that. You know, I, I I feel like it's well bought and well sold. Yeah, like I just feel like that's a good, solid, fair price for that for that car. But we still still trying to figure out what year they it, did it's, it. You, it it's a good price because if the seller bought it new, he made some money after enjoying it, which is exactly mm-hmm. what Donald Osborne was talking about the other day. Mm-hmm. And then the buyer was like, I just got one. It's shaken down. I don't have to get on a waiting list. Mm-hmm. I'll have it in 24 hours or, right. you know, or whatever, three days. Oh, we've yeah. Chris figured it out. 2015. So it's yeah. wow, six-year-old you're right old, six old vehicle. All right. Uh, yeah. How many... Who? Let's see. <laughs> Star Trek cast. Shatner is going to go 66 miles off the Earth and float around for 10 minutes. Yeah. And, and I guess you get to unbuckle and just float around and be Shatner for 10 minutes. But it's also like, they're going to run cameras. Like, what is he going to say when he's up there? It's going to be funny mm-hmm. and witty. Mm-hmm. And... When he jumps out of that pod in the desert someplace and lands wherever, like New Mexico, wherever they're landing, where Bezos land, mm-hmm. you know, what is he going to do? What is he going to say? Like, that's the entertaining part. So, uh, Chris, it'd probably just be the top six or seven <laughs> cast members. We don't get, we don't have to get into the guys in the engine room. I don't know if you had somebody in mind that you're just trying no, to. No, I'm yeah, just I, trying I, to figure out if they all cut an album because back then you cut an album. I, yeah, why? whether you could sing or not why? didn't matter. If you were if the show was popular, you were cutting out. But 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 now it's it's is it still books? It's still books, right? You're like, oh, you got a you got a fan base. You could do a thing. You should do a book. It'll be entertaining. Maybe back then they're like, eh, album seems easier. <laughs> well, you, you just <laughs> right? co- you'd especially cover, if you read the song like Shatner, you just cover Beatles songs. <laughs> yeah, that's and right. Someone else does all the arranging and mixing and all that. That's a that's light lifting, as I'm, we that, call it. I'm seeing, yeah, Admiral Kirk, Spock, Uhura, uh, and and Leonard McCoy all sang. They and all sang. Sulu all and sang. Scotty did not sing. They didn't sing. But I mean, they had albums. Well, if you look at their singing, wiki, like well, just, but here's the thing: being able to sing and doing an album back then were not the same thing. No, because they were also stage actors, right? Right, and, and like you would you would sing for that. But you're right. Being an album, and then here's the thing: is if you want, if you're going to be that guy, you're going to be that actor and do the album, and you want it to be successful, Christmas album. Right. You do a holiday album. You do a Christmas album. Right. It's going to sell. Right. All right. So you can try to figure out how many of them had dropped out, an, like album. an actual album. Yeah, not not who could sing, but who dropped an album. All right. Let me tell you about Geico. Do you own? Do you rent your home? Well, you do one or the other, and then there's bundling. Geico makes it easy to bundle your homeowners or renters insurance along with your automotive policy. And uh, speaking of automotive, I got a road trip story for you. We're talking about uh, Vegas. Yeah. I think I've driven to Vegas as many times as I've flown to Vegas. <laughs> I drove there famously in the back of a Datsun standard bed pickup truck in yeah. 1984. Ooh. I don't know when Icon got hold of it, but <laughs> I, I can tell you it left the <laughs> Nissan factory in 84. Right. And okay. uh, what time of year do you do that? Because well, it's... It's deadly. I went out for in like June for Barrett Jackson, and we stopped at the big thermometer. It said 117 degrees. It out. was it was the worst calculation of my <laughs> life because it was a standard bed, standard cab. Dot. It was black. Mm-hmm. I ended up buying the car. It yeah. was my buddy Chris owned it at the time. Later on, he sold it to me. It was the one I put the fuel cutoff switch in. Yeah, and painted right. the. And we were going to leave at like eight at night. To beat the heat. The, yeah. the thing didn't have air conditioning or anything. And, and uh, it's back when cars would overheat, too. Like, yeah, you couldn't sure. just take take that thing through Death Valley <laughs> at noon. It, it would overheat. Yeah. You know, it was the middle of the summer. And uh, Chris picked me up. I got inside. No headrest or anything. Just a bench seat. But at least I was in the truck. And then we went to go pick up Ray. And Ray just came down from his apartment. And he saw me sitting in the passenger seat. And he went, uh, get out. 
And I was like, no. And he's like, get out, ride in the bed of the truck. He didn't even have the split window that <laughs> yeah, for yeah. campers. Like, yeah, once you're uh, in the back. Hand me a drink. Hand me, at least hand me something. No earbuds. <laughs> no Gatorade. Yeah, no right? nothing. Yeah, no uh, AirPods back there with the noise cancellation. No. So he's like, uh, get out. And and I'm like, uh, no, I'm riding in here. And then um, he said, no, nah, just get in the back. Get in the bed. And, you know, Ray would probably, uh, pretty soon, we, you would start fighting. Yeah, you know? right. Start- so... I, but I, I being myself, I just said, Hey, Ray, one of us is going to ride in the front cab on the way there. And then one of us is going to ride in the front cab on the way back. There's just no way Mm -hmm. I'm going to ride in the back there and back or or you we're, we'll trade off. So I'll leave it up to you. And he was like, okay, get out of the car. And I was like, fine. Cause we're driving out at night. Yeah. We're going to come home at like noon on Sunday and I know it's going to be broiling yeah. back there and uh, and he's going to be getting punished by the sun so I'm like fine I got out got in the bed of the truck and just sat in the bed of a pickup truck and drove to Las Vegas yeah and uh, no camper shell no no nothing and um, just you and nature <laughs> we got there <laughs> and uh, at some point Ray ran into some guy named Saul who he knew who's like a little bit of a high roller yeah. and Saul bought him a, a, a ticket on a flight. <laughs> <laughs> so Ray ended up flying home and then I was in the front on the way home, but I'm yeah. still pissed. Yeah. I would Cause been, I, yeah. I got out of the car and, uh, and went in the back. You and, got out maneuvered. <laughs> now that was before Geico, but now I guarantee if that truck is on the road, it is insured fully by Geico. You can go to Geico.com. Get a quote and see <laughs> just how easy it is to save when you go to Geico.com. All right. Max Barrett, how many how many cast members from the original Star Trek dropped an elm? We know Shatner did. Shatner did. Nimoy did. And we know Nimoy did. Michelle Nichols did. Uh, DeForest Kelly, although he's credited as a great singer, he didn't actually drop an album. Interesting. And neither so, did Sulu or Scotty. Yeah. So just so wait, we got three albums out of that cast. Yeah, three out of six. That's impressive. That's not bad. I would have <laughs> thought maybe four. Yeah. It's also interesting that you know DeForest had some chops, but he also had dignity. You know what I mean? Like, I can sing, but just because I can sing doesn't mean I'm He was going probably to. like, let's see these other three, see how they do on their albums. Right. <laughs> Maybe I'll just sing backup on uh, Don Johnson's album. <laughs> yeah, DeFor- DeForest <laughs> Kelly often sings solo in morning church services. So. Wow. Yeah, okay. But never drop down. And the, the, the third one that did, was that the black chick? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that makes sense. All right, uh, Brea Improv, October 30th, two shows over there, and uh, Rob Riggle's going to join me for one of them. You can just go to adamcroll.com for all the live shows, Baltimore, Philadelphia, Portland, all all coming up, and uh, you can check out our chassis stuff, C-H-A-S-S-Y, on our Pluto TV channel, 687. What do you got, man? Yeah, just give me a follow on social media at Motorator. You can chat there. And until next time, it's Adam Carolla for Matt, the moderator, DeAndrea, saying keep the air in the spare and the bag in the wheel. For the latest updates and call-in times, follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at CarCast Show. If you'd like to write in, fill out the form on CarCastShow.com. And don't forget to give us a nice rating on iTunes. CarCast is a Corolla Digital production and is produced by Chris Loxamana. For more information, visit CarCastShow.com. Hey, Geico, do you own? Do you rent? Well, you do one or the other, right? You know, it's hard work out there. Owning, renting, you want to save some money? How about your bundle? Bundle your policies at GEICO. GEICO makes it easy to bundle the homeowners or renters insurance along with your auto policy. It's a good thing, too, because you got so much to do already. Go to GEICO.com, get a quote, see just how much you could save at GEICO. That is GEICO.com today. That's GEICO.com.